Hello everyone, happy New Year's, this is Vigil Day 32, and as promised yesterday, today, I'm gonna give you a breakdown on everything playing cards from 2015, tell you, you know, what I said was the, felt was the best decks from every company, and Kickstarter, and whatnot, kinda like my usual awards, but a little bit different, so let's get right on to it. First off, in order for me to consider decks, I'm going with decks primarily that I have gotten and or am familiar with because there's a lot of decks I didn't get, especially in, in regards to Kickstarter, that I am not going to bother discussing. <clears throat> the first, we're going to start off with the uh, independent uh, producer, creator, company, and whatnot, which kind of encompasses all these little internet shops and creators. Not, there's no one from Kickstarter on this list. No decks from Kickstarter. And, you know, no decks released by any of the big companies. It's only decks released by smaller companies or companies that only released one or two decks during the entire year. These are the decks that have made this list. <coughs> The Verts Spring and Summer 2015 Edition Deck. The Bicycle and Stokes Steampunk Angels, I believe it was called. DMC Black and Gold from Drum and Money Coots. The Keep Moon Deck from Bomb Magic. The Magic Scene Deck. The Skinny Vinny Lost City Decks. Uh, deck, I should say. The Bicycle Cycle Clowns. The Phoenix Vax, uh, there was new Phoenix Vax in black, purple, green, and orange from Card Sark. The Run It Once from runitonce.com. B. Kong He Fat Toy, which is from Star City Casino, something like that. The Prime Art from Prime Poker Cards. A red version of the Golden Bee playing cards. Sinners from Alan Morrison, the Victoria from WeHandCrafted.com, including the uh, one I'm yet to get, the Private Reserve one, that Death Guy deck, the Valentine or V deck from Steve Valentine, the Amour first and second edition from um, Coterie 1902, Cerulean Pearl, the Bicycle New Era V2, Bicycle Laundry, Miscellaneous Goods, Ivory Edition, Toto's Bar, 10th Anniversary Green Edition Deck, The One Entertainment, The Artilex from CardExperiment.com, Plain Arts 1 and 2, The Impossible Deck, which I think was from SimLim, I'm not entirely sure, Bicycle Fragment, The Bicycle Disney Deck, The Third Man Records Deck, The Spring Deck, which was uh, sold through Art of Play, but not one of theirs. The Stars of Magic from Los Scarabeo. Legends of Sleepy Hollow, which is from Pure Imagination Projects. Lux Saddle Edition from JP Playing Cards. Uh, although designed by, uh, was it Randy Butterfield? The uh, Cherry Casino decks, also from Pure Imagination Projects. Hashtag Goldfish Friday deck. The Midnight Calaveras from Dead on Paper, Cincy 52, Bicycle Peanuts, Bicycle Sex Pistols, Spoon Deck from Spoon the Band, The Arcana, Alpha and Omega from ScamStuff.com, The Charming Optical Illusion from Charming Toy, Bicycle Tiki DK in Blue, The Moonshine uh, Dark or Midnight Edition, Love Promise of Thou, which is from Bokobo, Blue Steel, also from Bokeable. Lux Palm Edition from JP Playing Cards and designed by Rick Davidson. A Manticore, which I think was from Edo Hong and through Indiegogo. Black Lions from David Blaine, even though I have yet to receive them. And the Heaven and Hell deck, which was from FlyingCoffin.com. So, which one of those kind of stands out? from the rest. What's one of those that I think was the absolute best of the year? There's a lot of decks in there. There's a lot that received, you know, 
Uh, kudos, there are good decks, a lot of good decks. But really for me, the one that stands out to me, that I like the best out of all of these, has to be, hands down. And, I mean, the Virtuoso is definitely up there. It's very close. But it is just a weak color for the most part. The one that I like the most, and I felt handled incredibly nicely, looked very nice, is Velux Palm Edition from JP Playing Cards and designed by Rick Davidson. So, congratulations to them. Excellent job on that one. I really, really liked it. As you might have noticed by my review of it. If it's even public. I don't know if that review is public yet. <laughs> Anyways, let's move along. I'm going to move on now to Bicycle. This is for decks that were released directly by Bicycle on their website, bicyclecards.com, and or uh, sold via Walmart or Target. <clears throat> so, the decks that Bicycle had last year include the Bicycle Panda in green, the Bicycle Craft Beer, the Bicycle Cocktail Party, the Bicycle Espionage Foil Edition, the Foil uh, Prototype Riderbacks, the Bicycle Bigfoot, Bicycle Goat Deco, Bicycle 130th Anniversary Edition decks, the Bicycle Chainless, the Bicycle Auto Bikes, the Bicycle Lux Riderbacks, the Bicycle Marsala and Moscato Riderbacks, the Bicycle Forest and Mint Green Riderbacks, the Bicycle Mariner decks, the Bicycle Steampunk decks, and the Hoyle Plastic decks, new Hoyle Plastic decks that they had. Um, a lot of nice decks in there. I was you know, really a big fan of the anniversary deck and the chain lease and uh, chainless and the auto bikes that they sold through target and i also like the new rider back colors although it's getting a little bit excessive when you're getting into sage of greens and reds and blues all the time um but for me the deck as i felt was the best uh, for bicycle 2015 is going to be the lux Riderbacks. Just because I felt it was nice to see USB-C stepping up the game, doing something completely new and different, even though they're a little bit pricey. They're very nice, very shiny, and it's just it's different. It's nice to see USB-C upping their game. So I'm going to give it to them for that one. But again, I was really a big fan of some of these other decks as well. Let's move into another one. So now we move into the Bucks. I am encompassing all the Bucks releases, whether it's from Dan and Dave, Buck, or Justin Buck, whether it's danandave.com, dexstarter.com, or artofplay.com, because they seem to be blurring together. I mean, we got Art of Play decks on Dan and Dave's website, and Dan and Dave decks on Art of Play's website, and Dexstarter decks everywhere, so let's get on into it. So we got the Red Wheel playing cards, Camp Cards, Sons of Liberty, Aviator Heritage Edition, Alice in Wonderland, the Antler Limited Edition, and the Antler Standard Edition. Uh, we have the Hollingworth's Burgundy Edition, the Aristocrat Classic Edition. And we have as well the Revelation deck from Dexter. There's the Alice in Wonderland. And let's see if there's anything else that I'm missing here. That is it, I do believe. The deck that I thought was the best for Dan and Dave, for the Bucks, for the year of 2015, was not a Dexter deck. And it was not an Art of Play deck. And though it was very close, it was not the Aviator Heritage Edition, although that might change. The one that I felt was the best is the Sons of Liberty. Be it because it's completely custom, because it's original, because it has a very nice tuck case, Whatever the case, 
I felt the Sons of Liberty was the best release of 2015. And I mean, again, I really like the Heritage Edition Aviators. And, you know, there was one or two other ones that were good. The, uh, the Angler decks were very nice as well. It's nice to see no Ace Fulton Casino decks. No Fulton decks. I was tired of the Fulton brand, so it's nice to get away from that. And it's nice to see some nice new original things. However, their Christmas releases, especially the camp cards, left a lot to be desired, in my opinion. But let's move on. Move on, we sell to CollectiblePlayingCards.com. And don't forget, if you go to CollectiblePlayingCards.com, you can use the code VJOSA32 and get 10% off your order. Just had to get that plug in. So let's see what they released in 2015. There is, and I have not received these yet, I just ordered them, but there is the Bicycle Gnomes, the Bicycle Sistine, Bicycle Beliza, there is the Elemental Series, the Earth, Wind, Fire, and Water decks, which I'm combining into one because they're virtually the same, the Bicycle Pinup, the Bicycle Viola, Bicycle Stained Glass, the Bicycle Fireworks, the Bicycle U.S. President, which again, I'm combining all into one because they're just tuck swaps. There is the Bicycle Robotics, the Bicycle Starlight Black Hole, Bicycle Red Core, the Bicycle Essence, uh, there's the Lux and the Classic, which again, I'm combining into one, Bicycle Ancient Machine, Bicycle Phenographic, the Bicycle Blue Collar, the Bicycle White Collar, the Bicycle Metal Deck, some of these are now available only to members, and the Bicycle Casino Deck, and I'll say the Bicycle Royal Scarlet as well, I'm not sure if that was last year or not, I don't have it on my list, but the deck that I felt was um, the best for 2015 from collectible playing cards. And there were some decks that were really nice. I mean, I liked the Lux decks, the Essence decks, I should say. I liked the, really liked the blue color and white color decks. And I liked some of these fun back designs like the fireworks and the stained glass. There was a lot of nice decks out there. The one that I felt really stood out and I'm not really going to take in the Sistine or Gnomes too much into consideration because I haven't gotten them yet. But I felt it was for Bicycle Pinup Deck. I mean, it just stands out amongst the rest. It's different, pretty unique, and it's got women on it. <laughs> Anyways, that is that. That's the 2015 deck of the year for collectible playing cards. Let's grow Proceed we will to their uh, competitor of sorts, if we will. They're also kind of partners in essence because they sell each other stuff. But it is playingcards.net, I should say more, more importantly known as Gambler's Warehouse, I guess. They have, for 2015, the Regal Decks. The Royal Pulp, and I will include the embossed editions along with that. The Spirit Decks. There is Strange Head Society, the Arcana decks, Ultimate Universe, Steampunk Bandits, which are on there, there that was not last year, there's Steampunk Bandits again, there is the uh, Brimstone decks, particularly the Aqua one, because the red one is just a reprint. And there is, I don't see it anywhere. But there is also the Bicycle Grid 2.0 Red Edition and the Guild Plastic Decks, which was a uh, also uh, 
they released through Kickstarter originally. There they are. The deck that I felt was the best for 2015, Gambler's Warehouse. And there was a lot of nice ones. I gotta give it, I mean, Royal Pulp was pretty cool. The same with Steampunk Bandits and Arcanum. Ultimate, Un Ultimate Universe is pretty unique. Regal, I really liked. And yes, you see on here the Alloy as well. However, I'm not including that one because I have not seen it yet, have not received it yet. Don't think they've shipped out yet. They're just pre-selling or going to be selling some of these decks. Or maybe they just did pre-sell them, but whatever. Um, the deck that I felt was the best. Gambler's Warehouse. For 2015 is... The Spirit Plane cards. They're really nice. Beautifully designed from top to bottom. The faces, the back. So you see the Luxet Palm of this index as well. It's a very nice one. We're the independent deck of the year. But Gambler's Warehouse deck of the year is definitely the Spirit Edition decks. Bicycle Spirit and the unbranded ones. Very nice. I don't like how they put Super Limited. It's 2500 It's not Super Limited. <laughs> Give me a break. But anyways, that is that for Gamblers Warehouse. Let's proceed to the next one. And I am back to talk about the next few. First of all, for Elite Playing Cards. And this one is just, uh, it's kind of weird. There's next couple of ones because they really didn't do a whole lot. But Elite Playing Cards obviously had some issues in 2015, but they're back. Uh... For 2015, not a whole lot. They did have some new stuff, but mostly recolors. They had the Bicycle 1 million in red, Bicycle Evolution in red, and the only new deck they really did, the Bicycle Collectors. Now, well, none of them are really, you know, at the top of my list compared to many other decks. I definitely have to go with the one original deck they did for Bicycle Collectors. Next up, Big Blind Media. Kind of in the same position. Not a whole lot, but they did do some recolors as well. They had the Carnival Midnight in purple, the Carnival Dose in red, and the Carnival 1984, which is the only new original deck. And I am... Obviously going to go with the Bicycle Carnival 1984, the only original new deck they did, and it's pretty nice. Let's move on to Robert Tomlinson, who of course did not have the best of years in 2015. Started off great, but then he ran into problems with his business partner, and he's going to be starting off fresh, brand new in 2016 with a new brand. I'm not sure what the name is, I think it's... No, I'm not sure what it is. Something mountain. But anyways. He did have some nice decks in 2015. He had the Titanic series. The Gettysburg Civil Unrest. And the Bradford County. Which was a localized deck that he produced. But it was still pretty nice. And he had a couple other ones that. Didn't quite make it to fruition. But maybe they still will in the future. Um, very nice work in all of them. I really liked them. I am going to go with, and again, it's very super duper close, but I will say his deck of the year is going to be the Gettysburg Civil Unrest. And why? I mean, the Titanic was awesome. It's up there. It definitely deserves it. However, for the Gettysburg decks, he actually went above and beyond. He went out and found his own Producer, he did not go to USBC or Legends or Expert or MPC or Noir Arts. He went out, found a company to produce decks for himself in China, and the quality was pretty good. It's up there. It's definitely up there. Probably better than the Noir Arts decks, as far as I'm concerned, and very similar to a USBC deck quality. So I will give him kudos on that for going above and beyond, and you know taking things into his own hands as far as production is concerned. So the Gettysburg Civil Unrest is the ones I'm going with. 
However, we're not done with Titanic decks yet. Let's go on to the Edgy Brothers. The Edgy Brothers. They released a few decks during the year that were very, very nice as well. There was the uh, Grimoire series. There's two decks in that one. A Necromancy and the uh, Necromancy and the Elemental Magic. I kind of lumped them together because they're pretty similar. The same series. There's also the Mardi Gras and the Dia de los Muertos V2. All pretty colorful, fun decks. The one that I felt really stood out though for the year, of course, Mardi Gras. Let's move on to 4 p.m. designs. Uh, this one, 4 p.m. designs for 2015, kind of a weird year. Uh, a lot of kind of recolors, reprints. And then there's one I didn't get, the Nightmare of Oz, which I kind of regretted later on. So it's not going to be on this list. But the decks on this list include the Grid Bicycle Grid 2.0 Red, Bicycle Grid 3.0, the Tanabra decks, of which they had four new colors, plus mini decks. There was the the Verd, the Aqua, and more recently the Zuka and the Nero, and also the Grid Reboot. The one I'm going to go with is not a recolor, and it's not the Nightmare of Oz because I didn't get that one. I am going to go with what is. A sort of a recolor, but it's not at the same time. I'm going with the Bicycle Grid 3.0. Just because I thought it was nice. It was nicely put together, even though the deck I received was missing a couple cards. But that's being corrected. But I just felt it was nicely put together. It's nice to see them, you know, taking the grid concept and turning it up a notch and coming out with something new and different again. So that is that. Let's move on to, we're moving on to a new one this year, JL Magic. JL Magic is apparently an Asian magic club that's been around for quite some time. But this year, for the first time they've gotten into playing cards, it's the first time that I know that they've released any decks. And they did three decks this year. First of all, you got these puzzle cards which have a jigsaw theme, jigsaw puzzle theme, as you can see. There is the children's deck, which are apparently on sale. Six eighty-eight each, only fifty-two left at this price, so go check it out. And don't forget the cool Vigils they fruit too, of course. And there is Drawing Scratch Black Edition. I'm guessing there might be a white edition eventually. And that is that. They're, you know, they're they're all right. They're interesting. They're different. They're unique. It's nice to see, you know, something that's not, you know, steampunk or zombie or Cthulhu or whatever. It's the same old, same old. The one I felt was the best out of the three for Jail Magic has to be... The Children's Deck. And I mean, I, none of them were, you know, earth-shattering or groundbreaking or anything like that. But this one... Is a deck that was designed by 43 children in Korea. It's all about bringing attention to these children and their needs. So it's for a good cause. And it was nicely done. It's fun. So I'm going to go with the children's cards. Which again are on sale right now. So go buy them. <laughs> so let's proceed now with Conjuring Arts. And Expert Playing Cards. I kind of lump them together because they're from. They're basically joined at the hip. So, Conjuring Arts, an expert playing card company, you see some of the decks here. The Chameleons, the Liars and Thieves, the Superior Brand, I actually have a couple of those in front of me right now, and the Zen decks, and there's a whole bunch of Zen decks, the Zen Pure Reserve, Zen Pure, Zen Pure uh, Gold Edition, I think it was called, Zen Pure Red Prototype, the Royal Red Zen, and... I think that's all the Zen decks. There's way too much Zen going on in 2015. So hopefully this year there's less Zen and more originality um, or new stuff. 
Anyways, some nice text though from Conjuring Arts. I really like the Damask finish they used on the Royal Red Zen. I really liked these uh, Superior Brand decks. They're awesome. They're really thick, really thick stock. Some people won't like it. Some are going to love it. But uh, that's the same with any deck of cards. Some people hate them. Some people love them. Any deck you can name, somebody's going to hate it or somebody's going to love it. But um, I do like the Superior Brand decks a lot. And it was very close. It was very tough. Between those ones, I mean, you get the Zen deck with this nice, awesome finish, the Damask finish and stock. It handles beautifully, but again, it's another Zen deck. Then you got the Superior Brand decks, which are awesome, but again, it's just a classic back. It a new box designed by Jackson Robinson. And then you got the deck that I felt was the best because it was the most original for 2015 from Conjuring Arts, the Chameleons. And again, it's very close, very hard to choose, but I'm just going to stick with the Chameleons because... Again, there's a more unique one. Interesting tuck case, nice foil, nice cards, custom as far as the jokers and the ace are concerned. And what more could you ask for? So that is that for Conjuring Arts. Let's proceed now with Midnight Cards and Randy Butterfield. They had a few decks out this year, some really nice decks. You see some of them here. You got the Bullerama decks, Midnight Bullerama decks, which are really cool. The Midnight Cosmic Lanes, Glow in the Dark deck, which is a novel idea, but obviously it wasn't the best handling wise. The Draconian decks, which are awesome as well. Ellen also not featured here. The Honeybee, which he designed for Penguin Magic. The Lux Saddle Edition, which he designed for JP Playing Cards. He also had a hand in the Breaking Bad decks, which we'll see in a minute. But he wasn't the only one involved with that one, so it's not included on this one. The deck I felt was the best from Midnight Cards and Randy Butterfield for the year. And I mean, they're all nice. I really liked all these decks that you see here. I really liked, I was a really big fan of the uh, Honey Bee decks and Penguin Magic. And they sold out very quickly because they sold a very limited amount. The one I felt the best was, that I felt was the best is the Draconia Dex. So it is really awesome. Nice back designs. Nice on the faces. It's a good job. And there's a new Draconian Brimstone deck coming in the very near future to join the Lightning and Spitfire Dex. So look forward to that. And he's got more coming this year as well, no doubt. All right, let's move on to Albino Dragon. What's Albino Dragon? And by the way, as I mentioned, Midnight Cards now has a shop on their website, midnightcards.com, that you can check out and buy some of those decks that you saw there. Albino Dragon, on the other hand, they are not going to have a shop anymore. As far as I know, the shop is done. They're not selling anymore on the website, although it's still there. What did they have this year? They had the Angelarium decks. The Wizard of Oz decks, even though I didn't get them, I'll include them. The Ghostbusters 30th Anniversary deck. There's the other Ancillarian deck. There's the Alien deck. There's the Breaking Bad decks. There's the Bicycle Dragon Tome. And there's the other Breaking Bad deck. And there was also... Oddly enough, I don't see it on here, which is weird, but I guess they also stopped selling them. Go figure. Or maybe they just sold out. But it is a bicycle. Where's my list here? The bicycle steampunk beginnings. I am including with that because it does have the logo on it, their name on it, and as far as I'm concerned, they're responsible for it. And <clears throat> and one more I was looking at as well. I'm not 100% sure if it's been produced yet or not, but I thought it was being sold already. I think it's been produced. It's the Gremlins deck, even though, again, I don't have that one. I have no plans for it. The deck that I felt was the best from Albino Dragon, and there were some interesting ones, some creative ones, but I'm going to go with the Breaking 
bad decks. Even though I've never seen the series, don't suit me. Uh, I might watch it one day, but I just felt they were pretty cool. The artwork was pretty nice. And that is that. I mean, all of the decks are okay. None of them really stands out too much, but I'm going to go with the Breaking Bad decks. Proceed into the Legends playing cards. <clears throat> and I'm going to say right now that Legends is probably one of my favorite card producers. But let's move on. The decks from Legends for 2015 include... The, I'm going to include the Tanabra, Nero, and Zucat Edition decks because they are selling the majority of them themselves. Only a few were, I mean, there was not very many sold through the Kickstarter project. So I'm going to include them on there. There is the Soundboards, designed by Patrick Varnavas. The Mirage, designed by Patrick Kuhn. The Legends Hipster deck, which is designed by Jelly Eklund. There's the Zuka. Uh, there's Legends Day of the Dead, Houdini Seance cards, and <clears throat> now I'm trying to figure out if the Serpentines have been included as well. I don't have it on my list. I don't remember when they were released. Uh, we won't worry about it. <laughs> and there's also, not on here, I, I don't know if they sold out or they just stopped selling them for the time being, but it's the Legends of Rock and Roll. Which they may start selling because maybe a legal issue, I really don't know. I haven't seen them, they disappeared. But the deck that I felt was the best in 2015 from Legends Playing Cards is, out of all of these, The Mirage by Patrick Kuhn, which I really liked. I liked the back design. As you can see right there, and faces, even though they're fairly standard, and I just really like playing around with it. I played around with it for quite some time. I had it there. I was playing with it all the time, doing magic with it, and I just really liked it. So that's the one that I'm going to pick. It may not be the most customized deck, but the fanciest deck. It does have a nice fancy back design and the gaff card, as you can see. But it's still, I liked it. We proceeded to Black Ink Playing Cards and Jody Eklund. He had an excellent year, some very nice decks from him. And it looks like 2016 is going to be another great year, as you can see. The Devastation Playing Cards coming in March. Awesome. So, for 2016, he had the Innovation Playing Cards, which are apparently available on his website. The Golden Spike Playing Cards. And he also had the Hipster Playing Cards, which you can see are available on hipsterplayingcards.com, but they're also designed by Jody Eklund and available on Legends website as well. The one that I felt was the best 2015 for Jody Eklund is very tough, very good decks from him, especially these two. And I am going to go with it's extremely difficult, but I'm going to go with the Innovation Playing Cards. I just felt that as nice as the Golden Spike Playing Cards are, the Innovation Cards were just a little bit better. Just Maybe just a little details, whatever. They're just a little bit better. But they're both awesome. They both deserve it. Great job from Jody Eklund. I look forward to more of his decks in 2016. Now we will proceed with Incarded and Paul Carpenter. They had a few decks out this year. Excellent decks again. There is the 52 plus Joker 2015 Club Edition deck. The Tendril Ascendant, the Tendril Nightfall. The Incarded Standard Edition deck. And I believe that was it. Now, I decided I'm going to lump the tendrils together because they're, you know, they're more or less the same. It's a series. They go together. And with that being said, they also had the Chancellor deck, but that was just a pre-release. has not been produced or delivered yet. 
That'll be for 27, uh, 2016. But the deck of the year, decks of the year from Paul Carpenter is the Tendril decks, the Nightfall and the Ascendant. They both deserve it. Probably the only time I'm going to select two decks in one uh, ward, if you will. So that is what I thought was the best from them. Let's move on to Natalia Silva, who got to start off this year. Some pretty cool decks. There's the Grusin Folk Art. There is the Love Is, even though I didn't get that one. She has a new one on Kickstarter right now called the Love You, which is basically a second edition with a, a much nicer bat design, in my opinion. Um, the Tuxedo, which we're not going to count because it hasn't been produced or delivered yet that I know of. And then there's the Christmas point cards. And I'm going to say right off the top of my head, or right off the bat, that I am not a Grinch. Christmas point cards, it is. It is the deck that I felt was the nicest one that she put out this year. They're all very nice. I like them all. But I'm going to go with the Christmas deck. Which you see right here. So now let's move on to Noir Arts, Noir Art playing cards. Uh, nothing for MPC this year because they only produced one deck. And I think that's pretty normal, but for them, so I'm going to move on to this company, a new company. And they had the Demon Decks, the Animagic, the Chess Cards, the Brandley, and there's also the new Brandley Royal Edition, the Asylum Playing Cards, and the defunct arm. The deck I felt was the best from Nor Arts is the defunct arms. If anything, simply because they felt fairly close to USB-C decks and they're fairly nice to like work. And they're not, you know, a reprint of the Asylum decks and, and, and whatnot. And just, I don't know. They're the better quality ones, the ones that fell into the best quality from them this year that I like the best. Some nice decks, however, throughout, but I'm going to go with the defunct ones. Let's move on to Thirdway Industries and Giovanni Marani. He had three decks this year. He's got more coming January 6th to Kickstarter. The Omnias, as you can see, Golden Age, Antica, Magnifica, and uh, the other one, oh, Perduta. One of them is to be unlocked. That will happen in no time. But these are the ones he had for 2015. The Delirium. The Evil Deck. And the Omnia. And I'm still waiting for the good decks. <laughs> no, no pun intended. I mean the actual good deck. There's the Evil Deck and there's still the good deck to come. But um, I'm going to go with the deck that I like the best from Giovanni Marani from Thirdway. For 2015 has to be the Omnia decks. And I mean nothing wrong with Delirium or Evil Deck, but I just felt that you know they're a little bit goofy, a little bit strange. Maybe that's just how they intended, obviously. But I liked the sexy Omnia decks. And the sexy women on them too. <laughs> so that is that. For a third way. Let's move on. Move on, we will. Let's talk about DeVoe. DeVoe had a pretty big year. He went from handlords.com and extreme card manipulations to embracing flourishing and cardistry, cardistry I should say for sure, with his new worldcardexperts.com. So for 2015 he had the Dominion Special, the Blades Gold Edition, the Cardistry decks, the red one, the Bicycle Cardistry decks, I should say, the red edition, and then the blue edition, and the Card Kingdom deck. And there's some weak colors in there and whatnot. I am going to go with, for 2015, deck of the year for DeVoe, Handlords, World Card Experts, whatever they want to call themselves, the Bicycle Cardistry in red, because it is the one... The deck that started the revolution, that started World Card Experts, and it's pretty nice. So I'm going to go with that one. I mean, nothing wrong with the blue one, but I'm just going to go with the original. So that's what I got for DeVoe 
let's move on to, let's talk about Kickstarter for a minute. There's lots of decks from Kickstarter 2015. I'm not going to talk about, you know, any from the bigger companies that we've already discussed. This is mainly that, that, you know, the producers who only had one or two decks. A lot of newer producers. So we got Unique Designs from Landry Sanders. Seasons, Verano, and Invernal from Alex, <laughs> Seasons Point Guards. Uh, the Empire from Lee McKenzie. The Explore deck. Black Book Manifesto. Fishing for Compliments. Olympia from Steve Minty, which I just got. Phrasebook Lingo decks. Black Fontaines from Zach Mueller. Uh, the Bicycle Asylum. Uh, even though this project was from like three or four years ago, I am including it because it did just get produced and fulfilled. At least some people got them. A lot of people did, I think. I know I did, so I'm including it. There is the Noble, just from the Design Imperator. Different deck in green. Uh, I forget who that one was from. Bicycle Call of Cthulhu from Saint Tyree, even though has not fulfilled the horror of the Orient Express deck. The Coat of Arms from Dan Pack Cards. The Choice Plane Cards, which is from uh, Ben. One of the Bens, there's a few Bens. <laughs> there is the Icer Gold from uh, Doug Fry. And I apologize if I miss some names. I'm trying to keep it brief. There's the Moku Hanga, the Bicycle Rongo Rongo, the British Monarchy Tally Ho from Lux Playing Cards, Pocono, Pocono Modern Retro Edition, the Jet Setter from Paul Ruccio, Deep, the Coven from uh, Brandon, no, it's not Brandon Cook, <laughs> Cook Slater, I believe it is, and his 52 Ravens Company, the Malam from System uh, 6 Magic, the Gamesters from Whispering Imps, the Bicycle Paragon from the new Safe Sisters playing cards, formerly known as Cardissons, Love is a Smoke Classic Edition from Passion playing cards and Ricardo Conturbia, the Memento uh, from Valerio Aversa, the Type Deck, again, it's, from a, it's been a few years, but it did finally get produced, the NPC Foil Impressions Decks, The Kingdoms of Erden, uh, from Timothy Olinger, I believe it is. Sisu, Four Beasts, from Sisu Playing Cards. The Playfair, the Metropole Lux, the Bicycle Maid, and Bicycle Feudal, from, collect, uh, from uh, Crooked King's Cards. The Usai Classic, from Usai. The Murphy Varnish Transformation Restoration Deck, from Home Run Games. And Michael Scott, the Aztec Codex from Emmanuel Valtierra, Venexiana Dark from Half Moon Playing Cards and Lotrek, Bicycle Vintage Vampires from Nat Iwata, who seems to have disappeared as far as Kickstarter is concerned, the uh, Quadruplicates Restoration from Half Moon, er, uh, sorry, from Home Run Games and Michael Scott, the Hell's Gate from Sisu again, Joker and the Thief from the YouTuber Joker and the Thief. The Spectrum 52 and Spectrum Edge from Cosmo Solano. The Bicycle Number 17 from Stockholm 17 and Lorenzo Gaziotti. The Artistic Spring, which was again from uh, Nikolai and um, Design Imperator. The Heretic, again from Lorenzo Gaziotti and Stockholm 17. The Arcana Terrets from um, Dead on Paper. And uh, Chris of Dienko. Four Seasons from Ace Collectible Cards. Leonardo Art from uh, Dent to Leon de Midi and ArtPlayingCards.com. The Derby Deck from San and Young. Black Market Decks, which I, I think again was from the Design Imperator. I don't quote me on that. The Glass Backs from Simon Bruno. The Fuego from Cellar Window. It's a miracle I can remember all these names. <laughs> The Mana Sybil Editions from Eric Mana, the, which I know a lot of people are still waiting for, unfortunately. The Bicycle Neverland from Nat Iwata. The Bicycle Mayhem, which is from Cardissons. 
the Muertos from Steve Minty, the Seven Seas, even though I'm still waiting for those ones, I've included them, the Bicycle Sky Descender, and that uh, Seven Seas is from Brain Wrestle Creative. Then there is the uh, Bicycle Cthulhu decks from Dan Chris, the Kings of India from Humble Raza, and the Glitz 2.0 from Soleil, the Zumbarome de Midi, uh, again, artplaincards.com. A lot of excellent decks. I would be remiss if I didn't, you know, mention the Stockholm 17 decks. And if I didn't mention the Joker and the Thief. But really, I felt the deck of the year from Kickstarter. From an artistic perspective and whatnot. Has to be the Arcana Terra deck. And I'm looking forward to the rest of the tarot decks whenever they come. But Chris Avdienko did an excellent job with those decks. I really like the art, the whole feel and the theme. And, oh, you know what? I'm missing one I forgot to mention as well. For sure, the uh, Brute decks, which should be on this list somewhere from Usai. And their uh, tarot deck, also excellent. But, um, you know, I could name all these decks and I could... There's so many decks here that I could say, you know, are, are the best. Or there's so many great qualities about them. And I don't want to single out anyone. I hate singling out anyone. But I'm going to go with the Arcana Terror. If I could do a tie, I would. But I, I'm not going to. <laughs> and, and sorry to everyone else who did naked. It didn't get, uh, you know, selected. But there's just so many. It's hard to choose just one. But that's the one I'm going with. But let's proceed. Before we move on to the last few major ones, there's a few a little fun ones that I put together. First of all, the best robot or steampunk theme deck of the year. We got the Ann Stokes Steampunk Angels, the Bicycle Steampunk deck, the Steampunk Bandits, the Bicycle Steampunk Beginnings, the Bicycle Robotic, and the Bicycle Ancient Machines. And I'm going to go with... The Bicycle Steampunk Bandits from Gambler's Warehouse. Next up, Day of the Dead themed deck of the year. There was a lot of them, so I decided the hell with it, let's do it. We got the Arcana from Gambler's Warehouse. The Functorms from Noir Arts. Theodore was Muertos V2 from the Edgy Brothers. Muertos from Steve Minty. Fuego from Cellar Window. Legends Day of the Dead. And the Midnight Calaveras from Chris Ovdienko and Dead on Paper. Some excellent decks, and I mean, there's other Day of the Dead decks, but they're not from this past year. I will say, and it's tough, there's some nice decks out there, and I really like the Dia de los Muertos second edition decks, I really like the Fuego decks, but I'm going to go with Muertos from Steve Minty, because I felt that was definitely the best. Next up. Historical theme decks. These are decks that have some kind of historical theme. The British Monarchy Tally Hole from Lux Playing Court. Sons of Liberty from Dan and Dave. Titanic from Robert Tomlinson. Gettysburg Civil Unrest from Robert Tomlinson. The Bicycle U.S. Presidents from Collectible Playing Cards. The Army from Jackson Robinson. The Union from Theory 11. Golden Spike from Jody Eklund. Innovation from Jody Eklund. Leonardo Art Decks. From, of course, uh, artplaincards.com and uh, Dentulian Dimitri. Kings of India from Humble Raza and the Stars of Magic from Low Scarabeo. I am going to say without a doubt there's some excellent decks in this list. I mean, definitely Jody Eklund is doing an excellent job with historical theme decks. But so is Robert Tomlinson. And I felt that his Titanic deck is the best historical theme deck of the year. And I've already mentioned it before I hinted. I did think it was the best because he went above and beyond to encompass the history of the Titanic decks. Not only in the artwork on the decks, but in the producing these little cases rep that are uh, replicas of the luggage that they would have had. The uh, keys... Having everyone that was on the Titanic represented 
on these seals on every deck, having the book with information on everyone that was on the on the Titanic, you know, all these little things that he did to me make it the best historical themed deck of the year. So congratulations to Robert. But not to take away from any other guys, they designed some excellent decks, but he just went kind of above and beyond with the Titanic deck. So he definitely deserves it. One more little fun one here, the Explore the World deck. Which is kind of for uh, decks that represent different parts of the world. There's the Moku Hanga, the Malam, the Bicycle Rongo Rongo, the Branley, the Russian Folk Art, Sisu Four Beasts, Aztec Codex, the Nexiana Dark, the Ultimate Universe, Lost Cities, and Skinny Vinny, and the Explore deck. So very nice decks representing different cultures and people of the world and places of the world. And it's probably some that I missed, could have included, you know, there's probably some of the historical ones I could have included, but I didn't. I am going to say, though, out of these ones, the Aztec Codex from Emmanuel Valtier. Very nice deck. I liked it from the very beginning, as soon as I saw it. And I'm still a fan of it. So that is that. Let's move on to some of the bigger companies now. Start off with the Blue Crown. And if you like green colors, Alex Pandrea is your man. Because that is virtually what they did in 2015. They had, and I gotta find my list here, but they had a white NLC, a black NLC, a light blue crown deck, the Danny De Ortiz green NLC, which is apparently sold out, the slightly overpriced Black Friday deck. <laughs> And I'm also including, oddly enough, the Sky Island Black Edition because it was publicly released in 2015, although it was originally given away as a prize and whatnot during Christmas of 2014. But it was only publicly sold in 2015, so I'm going to include it. And I am going to say that the deck of the year for 2015 is, has got to be, Oh yeah, they also had NLC trick decks as well, Joy. Um, I really kind of wanted to go towards the light blue crown deck, because it's not an NLC deck, but it is still a recolor. The Black Friday deck, in my opinion, was, it just does not really cut the mustard, it's not very good. Especially not for that price tag. So I'm going to go with a deck that wasn't even actually released and produced in 2015. The Sky Island Black Edition. <laughs> because that's how bad the year of 2015 was for the Blue Crown. And I will say, they did redo their website. They were out of business, out of condition for a little while. And maybe they had a little bit less releases because of that. But, and you don't even see it here, but the Sky Island Black deck was, you know, at least it had some customization. It was pretty nice. Even though... It wasn't actually produced in 2015. <laughs> Let's move on to King's Wild Project and Jackson Robinson. Let's see what we got here. Um, they had. They're not even on the website. Go figure. By the way, I would be remiss if I did not say, uh, if I did not give my condolences to Jackson Robinson as he just lost his uh, baby. And it's very devastating. Obviously for them. My sincerest and deepest condolences to them. Um, Jackson Robinson for 2015. He had a fair amount of decks. Very nice decks as usual. He had the Tally Hole decks. The Scarlet one. And the Emerald. Both uh, as a tribute to his two other daughters. And I'm sure we'll be seeing another one for his baby. Uh, I would not be surprised. And he also had, it's not on here, but he also had the Army Edition deck. I'm also including the 52 plus Joker Gold Edition and the 52 plus Joker Club Edition, even though he's not selling them on his website. And there is also 
the highest playing cards, high of second edition playing cards, which again are not on the website for some reason, but that were from uh, Brandon Hong. Brandon Hong, I should say. Maybe they're on here. His website. Whatever. Um, the deck 2015 for King's Wild Project that I thought was the best is uh, the Hive 2 playing cards from Brendan Hong. I mean, nothing wrong with any of the other decks, they're all awesome, amazing decks. I love Tally Holes. 52 plus Joker were pretty awesome, even though they're kind of 2014 decks. I have included them. But the one I'm going to go with is Brendan Hong's decks. The Hive 2 decks. Hopefully, we can find it here. There we go. Hive 2. Very nice decks. Beautifully designed. Nice limited edition deck. Nice artwork. That's what I'm going with. Let's move on to Illusionist. Uh, some people love Illusionist. Some people love to hate Illusionist. <sighs> um, let's move on. Okay, the are Illusionist. First of all, they had the Bumblebee playing cards. There is the Killer Bee playing cards. The SW Black Limited Edition playing cards, even though... I didn't think they're actually going to be publicly sold. Now they are. Leave it to Illusionist to ruin any value of playing cards. They had the SW Black Limited Edition decks that were not being publicly sold. Now they are. There was the uh, Madison Revolvers, which were not being publicly sold. But then they were. Um, any decks, the Gold Arcades. And now I'm turning this into a rant. I apologize. But I mean, you got Gold Arcades. Any deck that Illusionist has ever, you know, said was limited at this end, not being publicly sold, blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. They end up producing more, they end up releasing more and more, and they devalue everything. But anyways, let's start over. You got the Bumblebee, the Killer Bee, SW Black Edition, Blood Kings, SWE deck. Uh, fortunately, no mini decks that I can recall. There's the Absinthe V2. I barely qualified that one, but I'm going to say it anyways. Sleepers. Bicycle 52 Proof 2nd Edition, which again, I barely count, but I am. Um, the Black Kings. <clears throat> the Inverted Kings are on the list as well. I don't see them here, and I'm not sure if they actually publicly sold those ones yet, but they will. Um, of course, the Madison Revolvers, which I mentioned, which I don't see on the list. And the last thing I see pictured here is the Lion's Den. And there's also, I didn't see it, but there's also the Steelers. The deck that I felt was the best from Illusionist bar none for the entire year is the Bumblebee. It is nicely done, it's completely custom, and it's for a good cause. The first time Illusionist has done this. And I will recommend the Bumblebee and the Killer Bee to anyone because they're for a good cause, they're completely custom, they're nicely done, and that is that. It's not a Madison deck, it's not a simple back design or a casino style deck, it's completely custom and original. I like it and I look forward to seeing more. And it's also not a recolor like a lot of the other decks. <laughs> so let's move on now to, last but not least, Fury 11. Fury 11 had some nice decks, again some recolors, reprints, they had Red Monarchs, at least the second edition. I'm not, I don't remember when the first one came out. Green Monarchs, Reunion, Black Tycoons, The Nomad, Mailchimp, Contraband, 
summer edition MailChimp playing cards. They they also had a second edition of the medallions, but I'm not going to count that one. And they had the MailChimp summer edition, which I will count. And of course, the Gold Monarchs and the Blue Jack Sellers. Which are not seen here, but they're somewhere there they are. Um, and there you see the Summer Edition and the Gold Monarchs. I'm going to say, for me personally, I'm going to say the Union playing card. It's the last release. The best one. It's a very nice tuck case. A nice deck overall, even though it's pretty simple artwork-wise. But it is completely custom and everything as well, which I like. And the Contraband is also pretty nice. However, they went, there was just a little bit too much going on in the back design, in my opinion. So I'm going with the Union. Go figure, a Canadian is picking American themed decks for the best decks of the year for both Dan and Dave and 311. It's kind of weird. So that is that. There is but one more I'm going to talk about. And actually, I could talk about, you know, who I thought was the best company of the year. That... We'll go to Theory 11, because obviously it's not going to Illusionist. The Illusionist really dropped the ball, the ball in my opinion, as far as the releases are concerned. As far as the Black Club is concerned, I'm far from the early one. And uh, Theory 11, just, and, and, and Blue Crown really dropped the ball. They not only dropped the ball, they buried the ball. Six feet under with just recolor after recolor after recolor, NLC, NLC, NLC. It's getting boring, it's getting tiring, it's uncreative, it's lazy, it's lackluster. And, you know, out of the big companies anyways, I definitely think that 311 really did a good job. I really liked how they did uh, some releases or pre-releases for elite members and some excellent decks in them this year as well. Really nice decks. And some of them were just recolors and whatnot, or reprints, but still nice. <clears throat> um, I don't know if I'm going to go with the you know, manufacturer of the year, like I usually do. For the uh, medium-sized companies, smaller companies, you know, out of Damblers and collectible playing cards and Kings Wild and whatnot, I will say Gambler's Warehouse, definitely, because they really stepped it up a notch. It seems every deck they've been releasing lately has something new and innovative, whether it's the uh, that embossing like on the Royal Pulp deck, whether it's the Iridium foil like on the Alloy decks, there was Gilded Edition decks, and then there's the um, they came out with plastic decks as well, and there was also. I think there was another one I wanted to mention, but the, just really nice decks. They've really been, you know, pushing the boundaries of playing cards, foil on the cards, and, you know, and every release they're doing something different and new. So that's good. I will give it to them. Now, one last one. The new creator or company of the year. There's a lot of them. A lot of them are just Kickstarter ones. Some of them, we may not see anything else from them. Some of them we will. There's Landry Sanders. Who had the, uh, which one was it? I know which one it is, I just don't remember the name. I apologize. Oh yes, the Unique Designs. It's so unique I forgot it. And he has another one on the way as well. It's really colorful decks. Harris Siotnikno, I, I butchered that completely. Car Design, who had the Explore deck and they have another one. Uh, season Pass deck on Kickstarter right now. Keith Moon and BombMagic.tw. Ryan Edwards and we handcrafted who had the Victoria decks. Uh, Stacy J. Kelly and Pixel Initial Initiative. Haven't seen anything new from them, but they did have at least one. Penguin Magic, not a new company, but as far as playing cards are concerned, they are new. 
they're finally getting into the game. Justin Freud uh, and his company Jam Packed Cards, who had the uh, Coat of Arms decks. Avon de Razor, I know I'm butchering that name, and they had the Mokuhanga deck, I believe it was. Paul Ruccio, of course, had Jet Setter. Ricardo Conturbia and his Passion Point Cards, who have had a couple of decks. There's also the Avernum, which I did not mention for Passion Point Cards, because I did not get that one as of yet. Um, I apologize for missing that one, but it's pretty cool anyways. Uh, Lux Point Cards, Bookable Point Cards, Natalia Silva, Roman Cultive, and uh, Noor Arts, NPCC, as they call it. Jody Eklund at Black King Cards, Dent de Leon de Midi and his daughter Soleil, Zombrom de Midi, uh, and their shop, artpointcards.com. Scam Stuff, uh, aka Brian Brushwood, Scam School. Cellar Window, who had the Fuego decks, Emmanuel Valtiera, Simon Bruno, Valerio Aversa, Nikolai, uh, and Design Imperator, also Misery Development Limited. They're all kind of the same person. Ben Colazzi and his choice cards. US. That's the Ben. <laughs> I apologize. I pissed the one before. Alvin Chang and Sisu playing cards. Galen Allenfelt, who had the deep playing cards. Kirk Slayer and his 52 Ravens, who had, of course, the Coven deck. Humble Raza, who, of course, had the uh, Kings of India deck. Joker and the Thief. Of course, they have a couple more decks on the way. JL Magic. Patrick Kuhn, who had the Mirage deck. Patrick Varnavas, who had uh, the Sandboards deck. It's also a pretty cool deck. Blake Brennerman of uh, Cairo's Point Cards, who had the Revelation on Deck Starter. That's a deck, <laughs> not a Revelation. There's Vadim Smolodinsky. Um, who has had the, what is it, the, the Bicycle Lumberjacks, and more recently the Bicycle Eminence, which is coming sometime in the new year. Elephant Playing Cards, who has been doing some pretty interesting stuff, and they got a new deck launching in just under two weeks. The Pitmen Playing Cards, which I will have a review coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the prototype. There's Steve Minty. Been doing an excellent job. Giovanni Marani, uh, Giovanni Maroni and Fredway.it also been doing a very nice job. By the way, I should mention Steve Minty has a new deck coming out today on Kickstarter, 12 p.m. Pacific time in a couple of hours as it uh, recorded this video. Definitely worth uh, worthwhile checking out. There is the Toronto Playing Card Company, although I haven't gotten anything from them as of yet, but I plan on doing that eventually. JP Playing Cards, who's been doing some excellent decks with his Lux brand. Shape Sifters Playing Cards is the last one on the list, which of course used to be Cardissons. Out of all of these, and some of them, you know, are, you know, one-time creators. Some of them have done more than one deck. Some of them have more decks on the way. Definitely and I, I don't have Stockholm 17 on here, Lorenzo Gaziotti, because he's been around. I think he was in last year's pile. He might have won last year. I don't remember. But he was definitely in last year's pile. Um, but he definitely, you know, deserves mentioning. I definitely deserve uh, deserve mentioning people like uh, Giovanni and Ferdway. Um... um Natalia Silva definitely deserves mentioning. Passion Point Cards definitely deserves mentioning. I like what Penguin Magic has been doing so far. Um, of course, JP Point Cards deserves mentioning. Steve Minty definitely deserves mentioning. Same with the Joker and the Thief. Humble Raza, excellent outing with the first stack Kings of India. Don't know if there's any more planned, but I hope to see more from them. But, definitely... You know, looking at this list, the, the new creator and or company of the year, in my opinion, with a few excellent decks out this year so far, more on the way, is 
Jody Eklund, black point guards. And that is that. And there's going to be tons of new decks this year on Kickstarter, no doubt. Tons of new creators. Some of these creators might have more decks, hopefully. But anyways, that is that. Let me know what you think. I know it's a bit of a long video. I do apologize for that. But hopefully it was a little bit better than what I usually do. I don't know. But anyways, that is that. Again, thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you felt were the best decks. I'll see you next time.